Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about managing a continuously reapplied coolant system or CRCS reactor with applied energistics. The CRCS reactor is the answer to the old Kazakh reactors from the previous versions of Industrial Craft 2, uh, where one could push a bunch of ice into the reactor to cool it down. Since this is no longer possible, what we're going to do instead is we're going to push uh, coolant cells into our reactor, and when they get hot, we're going to take them out and put them somewhere else to cool. Um, in this example, I am using the 60K NAK coolant cells, although you can use just the regular 10K coolant cells as well, and that would work just as fine for this design. Although this is not the best design, um, it is just here to show you how this functionality works. So in the middle here, you see we've got eight quad plutonium cells, and for anyone that has worked with reactors, you're aware that these put off quite a bit of heat. Uh, especially when you have them snuggled together like this or next to the iridium neutron reflectors. Um, the other thing that you'll notice in here is that we do have some overclocked heat vents and these are just to cool off our reactor if it should ever pulse while the NAK cells are out of it. Um, so let's talk about how we're controlling when our reactor is on and off. Uh, we've got a redstone torch here and so whenever a redstone current is applied to the block below it the redstone torch turns off and our reactor turns off. So applying redstone uh, signal to this block, we've got three different things. The first one is a lever. So this is our manual on-off switch, and right now we are turned off. Um, the other thing is our safety system. So we have a remote thermal monitor, and it has a sensor location card from this reactor in it. Um, and so if the reactor ever goes over 100 heat, it will turn it off because we expect our reactor to stay cold all of the time. So if it has any heat at all, then it's a problem and we need to wait for our um, overclocked heat vents to cool it back down before we continue running. The third thing is a level emitter. Uh, so this level emitter is tied into an ME system with a storage bus attached to this reactor. Um, so the our ME storage system here is counting the number of coolant cells in our reactor and if it falls below 18, and we're going to talk about this number in just a second, if it falls below 18, then it emits a redstone signal and that turns our reactor off. So we don't want it firing if it's not full of coolant cells. So you'll notice there are not 18 coolant cells in here. We actually have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so why are we triggering at 18? Well, the nuclear reactor is doing something a little bit strange, and that is if you are putting your coolant cells into something that is not part of the main chassis, not part of the center block here, but in the extension block, uh, and you don't have a full complement of extension blocks, it's counting it multiple times. So these two over here are counting at six apiece. So if we look in our access terminal, we can see right now it believes we have 18. If I take this one out, well, this gets immediately replaced. Um, let's break this for just a moment. Bloop. All right. So now if I take this one out, it shows us that we have 12. Okay. But if I put this one back in and I take this one out, it should show us that we have 17. Okay. So that's a little bit of odd behavior, but very manageable, especially in our current scenario. So... Uh, all we really want to do is just make sure that all of these are in here, and whether it says 8 or 18 really doesn't matter. Um, but we just need to track what it believes it has. So do double check, do throw an access panel on here, and make sure that it is showing um, the correct amount that you're toggling on the correct amount. You don't want your reactor staying on when there aren't the correct number of cells in there. Okay, so that is the control of our reactor. The next bit here, let me put my ME cable back. Let me spell ME cable correctly and then put it back. So the next bit is we have a second system um, that has a bunch of storage buses connected to some reactors back here. And in each of these reactors, all we have are some coolant cells and some component heat vents. This, again, is not the best way for you to be cooling your components um, for a CRCS reactor, uh, but it is effective um, and, and easy to understand. So that, that's why we're doing it. So each of these component vents, um, it cools four uh, heat off of each adjacent block per tick. So that's why we have in this checkerboard pattern. Each of these are cooling four heat off of each of the NAK coolant cells near them. Um, so each of these coolant cells that have four surrounding are getting cooled 16 a tick. These are getting cooled 
12 a tick and then the ones in the corners are being cooled 8 a tick. And in some designs I have seen people block in the corners. We don't really care. We're just, we just want it cooled as fast as possible. So um, cooling this one 8 a tick is better than not cooling anything at all for us. Alright, so we've got a huge number of reactors here and we even have the, the backs on some of those. So we are using um, three um, chambers on each of our reactors over there and they all look exactly the same. They're all doing the exact same thing and they're just hooked up into our second system with a line of storage buses. Okay, so that's where we're cooling our cells. And then as far as getting them in and out, um, so our export buses in this version of Applied Energistics are like the precise buses from the new version. So we want to precisely send back 60K and AK coolant cells with zero stored heat. All right, but we also have to get our damaged cells out of the system. Um, and so we are shipping them out of the system whenever they have 1056 heat. And that's just one reactor pulse. Each reactor pulse is going to toss 1056 heat on uh, with these quad plutonium cells. So if you're not using quad plutonium, you know, just run your reactor one pulse, pull one of the cells out, and put it into the export bus. And, and that will adequately show you um, how much heat is on them. So the, the tricky bit here and, and why the reactor shuts off and lets us switch our cells out is because the level emitter is also precise. So the level emitter, as soon as our coolant cells have heat applied to them, they're no longer counted as uh, for the purposes of our level emitter. So they will not count for the zero stored heat, um, so it will shut off as soon as heat is applied to them. Uh, so let's get this thing going and see how it looks when it's working. We're just going to flip our lever here and take a look and you can see the cells are being damaged and replaced, damaged and replaced, damaged and replaced. Um, now it is possible for our reactor to uh, tick while the cells are being replaced uh, because the level emitter is not precise. It, it, it is sometimes a tick off um, and so when that happens you'll see our heat vents catch the heat from the reactor. Now we're pulling these out three at a time uh, because we have three export buses uh, and we're putting them in three at a time because we have three import buses. If you want to be a little bit on the safer side, you can pull them out one at a time. Uh, it's much less likely that your reactor will tick while they are out if you only have one. And if it does, it will get less heat applied to it. Um, the more cells that are out at the time it ticks when it's out, obviously the more heat that's going to go to the hull. So right now, um, you know, it's going to be 1056 times the number of cells that are missing. Uh, if your reactor happens to tick uh, while the cells are out of it. Okay, so we're, I mean, we're actually getting pretty decent energy output out of this little guy. Um, he, um, typically, if, if this were running all the time, he'd be making um, about 2,800 uh, EU per tick. Um, so it's not going to make that uh, because it's pulsing on and off. So um, really, it's... it's uh, th this is definitely not an, an economical way to do it. In order to keep this running most of the time, you're going to need a very, very large number of these reactors. There's, there are much better ways to do something uh, similar to this, uh, but I chose this method because it's safer um, and because it's kind of easy to see what's going on. So I will likely post a follow-up video with a more functional design, um, but this does kind of illustrate the principle of of the continuously reapplied coolant system reactors. So I hope this has been helpful to you and, and you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, basically we're using a storage bus coupled with a level emitter to calculate the uh, the number of, or to count the number of cells or coolant cells in our reactor. Um, once those coolant cells get hot, we're using export buses which are precise um, to ship those into a bank of reactors to be cooled down. Um, once they are cool, we're pushing them back uh, through export buses, which again are precise, into our main reactor. And because of our level of mirror down here, once we have a full complement of undamaged cells, coolant cells, uh, we'll turn on, unless of course we've, we've ticked while they were out, in which case we're prevented from doing so by the heat on the reactor. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them below. Um, otherwise, I hope this is helpful in understanding the CRCS reactors from Industrial Craft 2, uh, and I'll probably make another video to show um, a slightly more dangerous but more effective way to do this. Thank you.